In this tutorial series, we will learn how to bring in an animated scene from the object and SOPS contexts of Houdini into LOPS and render it out with Karma and Material X. This will not be a comprehensive and exhaustive or technical breakdown of USD and USD concepts. On the contrary, it is aimed at simplifying rendering in Houdini and demystifying rendering for artists working solo or in a small pipeline. Let's take a look at the scene that we'll be lighting and rendering in LOPS and Solaris. It's an animation of a walking mech. It is 160 frames long. It's a bit slow on playback. Everything is cached, but there's some pretty heavy geo here in the frame. Uh, the sequence here is made up of several different objects, and they're divided here into sections. We've got our character, which is the mech. We have the environment, which consists of a terrain, Mountain 1, Mountain 2, and then an atmosphere here that we'll use for rendering. And then we have the camera, which is parented to an animated null. So the camera has no keyframes on it, but the null is moving along with the mech. And this way, if we lock the camera here, we want to rotate it, choose a different angle, we'll still be traveling along with the mech as we should. I'm going to dive inside the nodes and we'll take a really quick look at what's in here. So with the mech, I didn't include the actual rig and keyframe animation. Everything is baked down here for simplicity. And of course, to make sure that there's no issues uh, transporting the files. So what we have is the sequence of the animated mech. If I turn off this transform node, what you'll see is that it is just a static walking sequence here, a loop. And then we're doing a transform here to match him up in world space to his footsteps. We are calculating the motion blur here, the velocity, so that we'll use that to create motion blur inside LOPS. And we have a disabled colored node here. This will be used later for demonstration purposes. The mech rest pose is the actual bind pose for this mech. Uh, this is what it was rigged to. And we have colors assigned to all the various components of the geometry here, and that's going to be used for demonstration purposes later. The environments are all height fields. I've left the information in here for all of them. So we have the foreground one here, and you'll notice everything's been converted to geo. This is going to make it a lot easier to light render texture, all of these, rather than worrying about the height field conversions later in the process. Mountain one is here. There's a node network, which I use to write all of the various uh, maps and masks to disk so that I could use them for texturing later. And if we kind of zoom out and look overhead at this one, we have a color attribute here going from white to black, which we'll be using later in the tutorials to blend this mountain into the terrain here and to blend it in to the background there as we need. And that's all here where it says create mask. That is that node there. Mountain two is basically the same as mountain one, but we didn't need that attribute on there. So I didn't do that. And then the atmosphere node, it's probably easier if we take a look at that over a dark background. The atmosphere node is a very simple volume VOP here. So we start with a box, convert it into a pretty uh, low resolution density field. And then we're just using some bounding box information in here to create a gradient along the Y vector there. And then a volume visual visualization so that we can have something nice in the viewport here that represents somewhat of what our final scene is going to look like. All right, so that is the walkthrough of the starter file. Now let's learn how to get this into LOPS.